Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldiers Talk the Podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson, and on this show we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Today I have a special guest. I have Staff Sergeant Cyber. What's going on, Sarge? Hey son, how you doing today? Uh so how your day been going so far? Everything good. Um doing this military military thing. Still doing it daily. So has the day been pretty going pretty good for you? Is it busy or what? Uh today been pretty good. Had a productive morning. Woke up, did some gym PT. Did a little sharp training when I came in. That's all I've been doing today so far. Okay, sorry. Uh before we kind of get into the interview, uh kind of introduce yourself to the people. Let them know like where you from and stuff like that. For sure, son. Um Staff on Cyber. Been in the military nine years. Uh I call Alabama my home. Uh, my mom, she was in the military for 30 years, so I bounced around with her a little bit. Um, came up majority of the time in Texas, San Antonio area. She was stationed at Fort Sam. Uh, I've been back to Fayetteville. My mom's from Fayetteville. I've been back to Fayetteville, summers, uh, Christmas breaks. Um, and uh, I went to high school, graduated high school in Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, then after that, moved straight back to Alabama, did a few years of college there before I joined the military. So you can kind of call me a military brat, but I call Alabama my home. Okay, so you say you, you uh went to high school in Oklahoma. Yes, in what? Lawton, Law Oklahoma. Uh, my mom was stationed out there in Fort Seal. I went there for from my sophomore year and graduated my senior year. Right after that, I moved, moved back to Alabama uh, to where I pursued two years of college before I joined the military. Okay, so far as what, when, when did you leave, uh, how old were you when you left Alabama? Um, I was a young, I was a young boy, can't even, can't even remember. Uh, I just know I, I did elementary school and all the way through summer high school in San Antonio uh, until my sophomore year, and then that's when I moved to Oklahoma. And then I finished out high school there, uh, played basketball, a little bit of football. That's it. Okay, so far as uh, growing up, so I would say middle school up to a high school, kind of like uh, explain like kind of like the stuff you was doing as far as was you involved in any sports or was you a good student in school and stuff like that? Uh, I was. I, I would say I was a. Uh, I was a good student. I just ain't always put my mind to to school. Uh, well, I had to because I played basketball. I played basketball all the way to I graduated high school. I played a little bit of football, but then my main focus was basketball. So it's kind of like I had no choice but to put my head in the books just so I can play. But, yeah, I just, I just focus on basketball uh, in school, really. So you went to a strict, did you go to a strict high school to where, like, you had to do good in school in order to play sports? Well, yeah, um, both the high schools I went to, yeah, they, they was big on grades. Um, my first, when I first got to high school, my ninth and tenth grade year, I went to this, you can call it a, it was a public school, but it, you can call it a military school. Um, it was kind of strict because... The coach, he he wanted everybody to have, like, shaved, like, ball fades or whatever. You couldn't really have, like, no long hair playing <laughs> for that coach. Okay. So that was that was different. But then when I moved, I went to a a public school that was outside of um, Fort Seal. It's called Lawton High School. I don't know who's familiar with that, but, like, they weren't really that strict. You can have your hair any type of way. You can wear whatever you want to, stuff like that. Okay, uh what position you played in uh basketball? Uh so I played when I my ninth and tenth grade year I played um shooting guard and then when I got to my next school, like the middle of my summer year, I played shooting guard and some small forward. Yeah, all the way till I graduated. Was you in the good though? Cause I know like a lot of people say they be good and really be riding the bench. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, so 
my freshman year, I played junior varsity high school where, where I started, but like the the school was a two way, so it wasn't really that much competition. Like we played like little country schools, but I used to like drop like fifteen average a game. I used to drop like fifteen on junior varsity, and they would let me like suit up for varsity, but I'll ride the bench. Um, that was my freshman year. My sophomore year, I played strictly varsity, and I I didn't start, but I came off the bench as a six man, and at that point, I was probably averaging about, I say, 10 a game. And then when I moved to um, Oklahoma, uh, I, they had everybody who was below a senior. play. They played junior varsity just so we can have a team. And uh, I started um, junior varsity my sophomore and junior year. I started uh, as a, a shooting guard, and I would drop probably like 15. But – I still, like, played varsity my junior and senior year. But I started uh, varsity my senior year. And at that point, I was just a role player. Like, I come out, drop a little couple points. And then, like, yeah, it was just like that. I was just a role player, really. Defense was my my specialty. Okay. So, what, do you, like, play now or what? Uh, I did after I graduated. I, I still was hoping, like, like on Saturday, pick up games, stuff like that. Well, during the week, pick up games too. But then when I started having children, just that that kind of drifted away from me. I mean, if somebody asked me to like, if I want to come hoop, I I still come out there and, and do a little something. I ain't really big on it right now like that. Okay, so uh, after high school, what happened? Like, when, did you go to college or anything like that? Yeah, I went. Um, I did two years in college at Jacksonville State University in Jacksonville, Alabama. Uh, I was majoring in communication broadcasting, and then uh, I only did that for two years. And then uh, I, I had a daughter that was coming on the way, so the best fit was for me to, uh, like, in order for me to raise my daughter, um, the best fit f- was for me to join the military, you know, free um, medical benefits, steady income, and I got to uh, raise my daughter as well. Okay, so went to college uh, for two years, got some college credits. Yes. So, uh, like with your mom being in the military, like kind of explain, like did she kind of instill anything in you as far as like when you were seeing her like coming home in uniform or like did anything like want to influence you to join the Army? Uh, No, uh, my mom, she like a lot of – a lot of Kids that have military parents, they uh, like they see that in their parents, and they want to pursue the same thing as their parents, or their parents are like instill like military discipline onto them. But my mom, she usually kept things at work. Like she never brought military home, and she always wanted us to be better. Like me and my brother, she always wanted us to be better than what she was. Um, she always um harped on. Uh, education. She made education bigger than like a big thing. Um, so she never really wanted me to join the military, but it was when um, I had a child on the way that uh, she was just like, "This is the best thing to do is to join the military." You know, what I'm saying you have you have a steady income, you have you always have a place to uh, live, stuff like that. So she really ain't like forced the military on us. Uh, we. I didn't. I didn't grow up thinking I was gonna be in the military. I thought I was gonna be. You know, everybody got their dream. Like I'm making to the NBA. But when I got to high school, I was like, Nah, I ain't gonna make it to the NBA. But I can major in something that I like, which is like, I I was really into music. Uh, so I was like, If I can be on the radio and like I'm playing music, that that that's something good for me. So that's why I made. That's why I chose to major in communication broadcasting. Okay, so. Um, while she was telling you like to join and you have a steady income and stuff like that, so uh, when you started to think about it, like how old were you when you started to think about that, making that decision? Uh, I was uh twenty years old. Um, I had yeah, I had turned twenty and I uh, finished out my second semester of college, and I was going into summer school. Like I was doing, I was taking class during the summer, and that's when I uh found out that I had a 
uh, baby girl on the way. So that's when I really was like, yeah, that's when my mom told me. She was like, you, you might as well just join the uh, military so you can provide, like, better for your daughter. Because at the time, I was just going to school. Like, I ain't had no job. Well, I had a job, but it was like a weekend job, summer job. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for me to um, raise a baby girl. So that's when I that's when I really started to look into the military. I went to the recruiters. They was getting me set up and all that to uh, come join the military. Okay, so uh, you went to go see the recruiters and stuff. So tell me about that experience. Like when you first went to the recruiter, like did they give you a practice test or what? Yeah, so um, I went to the recruiting office in Columbus, Georgia. Um, it was a young – I forgot my recruiter name. I can't even remember, but he was a young – he he looked young. He was a, a staff sergeant, young um, staff sergeant. Uh, so I immediately was like, oh, this this, this going to work because he he was just like me. He talked like me, you know, carried himself like me. Um, when I got there, yeah, I took a practice as well. Um, I think I did – yeah, I did pretty well on it because – my mind was still fresh with school, so I did pretty well on it. And then uh, they just got me – he just got me going and start um, filling in things on the uh, – whatever system they had. He got me He got me pretty quick to go to basic. I think I started – I went to recruiting in July and I um, went to basic in uh, October 1st of 2013. So it was a pretty quick process. Uh, it was smooth. They got me prepared, made sure my PT was right. Um, that's basically it. Okay, so uh, when you went to the recruiter and y'all and you did the practice sets and stuff like that, so what MOS did you choose? I chose uh, – so at first I didn't know anything about, like, MOS. I asked him, I was like, what MOS? He was like, oh, that's your, that's going to be your job in the Army. And um, so I was like, I don't, I don't know nothing about that. So he started naming all stuff. He told me like uh, 92 Golf, um, 11 Bravo, stuff like that. And I was like, I don't know what none of this is. He told me 92 Golf was cook, 11 Bravo was infantry. I knew I didn't want to do infantry, so I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. But I knew somebody at the time that had just uh, graduated AIT right when I was um, doing the recruiting process. And I asked them what their job was. And it was like, uh, I'm a 92 whiskey, and I was like, "What is that?" It was like, uh, "That's a water purification specialist." It was like AIT was smooth, it was easy, the job easy. So I was like, "I'm gonna take the easy route." So I chose 92 whiskey as my first, my first MOS. So 92 whiskey was your first MOS, right? Son. What? So, uh, okay. So 92 whiskey. So. You just basically chose that because somebody else I was already that, and yeah. <laughs> they told you to. They told you it was kind of like pretty good MOS to choose. Yeah, they said it was good MOS to choose. Uh, they said the AIT was was good. It was it was in Fort Lee, Virginia. They said it was smooth out there. They said it was easy to um, get through AIT. So I chose the easy route. And they said that, um, and I ain't know. That military, like you taking that course, like it's basically something that go on your resume for like civilian world. If you ever decide to get out, that was your job in the army. You can always go work at like a water plant, like in the city, like you you dealing with the water and all that stuff. So I I, I thought about that that too. Okay, so far as basic training, so you say you went to basic training October twenty thirteen. Uh, I want you to run me down basically the first day on what happened. Like, what was you thinking and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> so, basic training. Uh, I went to Fort Leonard, Missouri for my basic training. Um, so, the third day, they drove us to uh, Atlanta. I flew out of Atlanta um, airport. And I remember I was, I was in the airport and I got to the gate. I got to this gate. And this is the first time me flying by myself. So, I got to the gate. And I was reading my, I was looking at my my uh, ticket, and I was like, "Is it the right gate?" Because I kept looking on the screen, and it, it didn't say Missouri on it. So I was like, "Is it the right date?" So uh, 
I look at my ticket again. I was like, man, this is the wrong gate. I was on the opposite side of the airport. And my flight was leaving. Like, the boarding stopped. They stopped boarding. Like, it was like 15 minutes before I noticed. So, it was like me and like three other, three other dudes that was going to the same um, basic training. It was, it was us three. We was booking it across Atlanta Airport. And if anybody know how big Atlanta Airport is, that it, it be. So, we were just booking across there. We made it just in time. So whole time, like I'm on a flight, like I'm nervous. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know this spit because I was on YouTube looking at like basic training videos and how they, how they acting basic, and all I seen was yelling. So I was like, man, I don't know, I don't know if I'm built for this yelling because I don't know if I can, like, because I'm, a, I was a hothead at the time, so I was like, I don't know if I can take nobody yelling at me. But when I got there, it weren't, it weren't as bad as I thought. Um, you know, they shaved my head off. And, uh, they were doing all the yelling, but I just tuned it out and, uh, cause I, I had a bigger goal to accomplish for, for my daughter. So, but like the first, the first day when they bed, they were, it was, it was, it was regular drill sergeant yelling in your face, shave your head, give you your uniform that it weren't, it weren't that bad. Okay. So, uh, far as. Uh, the actual experience, like, cause you got something that happened, like, where something happened, where like, some stood out the most to you, or some didn't some change you or anything during basic training. Um, it was just the teamwork because I always kept myself, like, I always been to myself because it's hard for me to trust people. Still hard for me to trust people today, but when I got the basic training, the the teamwork they instill in you is what. Like really did it for me because like we all got the same uniform on. Like we wake up every day, um, we all shaving our face, we all putting on the same uniform, we all get haircuts at the same time, we eat at the same time, we sleep at the same time, and it was just it is still family. So I was like, um, this 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 organization might be the best thing I ever did. Cause um and it's still discipline and it's still uniformity, and uh yeah I think that that would be the the main thing that I would say changed my whole mindset from civilian to a soldier. Okay, but what I was saying was like that's what probably what changed you, but like was it something that stood out to you the most to where like an experience you had to where like. You know, like something that happened where like stood out the most. Is that the only thing that stood out the most, or what? Yeah, that was really the only thing that stood out the most to me. Cause I was really just trying to just get through it. You like, wasn't the type to get in trouble a lot. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't get in trouble in basic. AIT, I got. I got. I used to get a little bit in trouble, but basically, I was just trying to get out of the. Uh, I always. Like hit in the back in basic training, so I really ain't getting trouble at basic. Okay, so uh, far as after basic training and AIT, so what was your first duty station? Uh, my first duty station was Fort Hood, Texas. Okay, I see you smile when you said Fort Hood, Texas. So, <laughs> what's going on at Fort Hood? Fort Hood was just it. It was it was it was different. It was uh, different than any other duty station I had. For Hood was like, it was a beast. But For Hood, what made me like, I can do this Army thing because it was just, it weren't no half stepping in For Hood. Like, everything was on the money. Uh, so For Hood, I, got, I hold a special place in my heart for For Hood. Okay. So, what I want to say is, when you got to your first duty station, your uh first line supervisor, did you have a sponsor or anything like to show you around the unit or how how that happened? Uh, when I first got there, um, I can't remember. No, I didn't have a sponsor. Uh, so when I was on my way to Fort Hood, Texas, I was I was driving from Alabama. I was I was officially moving to. Uh, for Hood, Texas, and I remember I was like, I don't know who to contact uh, when I when I get to Fort Hood. 
Like, I don't know where to go, who to contact, nothing. But I remember uh, I had got an email. I can't remember what the email actually said, but I know my first sergeant name was on, was, was on the email, and he, and he had his number on there, and I had took it down. So when I was on my way, I had called my first sergeant uh, to my unit for Fort Hood, and um, I was like, yeah, I'm on my way to Fort Hood, first on, I don't know where to go. I don't know, even know where to start. And he told me, he told me where to go, like, to in process. And after he told me that, he was like, hey, get ready, because within a month, we, we going to Afghanistan. We about to deploy. And, and and that was it. Okay. What part of uh, Afghanistan? Hold on. So you said first star was the one was the one who uh kind of shows where every, everything was at? Right, son. Uh, so what I wanted to get at, so once you got to your job, like what, what was you doing when you first start actually get to your job? So when I first got to my job, we had a uh, – we had a platoon. It was fuel and water. So we ain't, we weren't strictly focused on water um, at that point. Like, during daily operations, we didn't focus on water. We helped the fielders, the 92 Foxes. We used to help them out, go on the line and help them out. Uh, because water, the only thing we did with water at Fort Hood was we'll go to the um, water point, fill up the uh, hippo, and the water buffaloes and take it out to the field. That's really what we did. Uh, we used to lay out our equipment just to like do inventories, but that was really it. We usually just helped the fielders most of the time. Okay, uh, far as when you was actually working, so did you have a first line supervisor? I did. I did have first line supervisor. So tell me about them. Like, was they good? Did you like? Did they show you the ropes or like? Uh, did you have a bad experience with them or what? Oh no, that was good. Uh, first line supervisors. Uh, I can remember their names. Uh, one was his name was Sam Masawudu. Uh, he was good. Uh, he basically just kept everybody on point. Like we we really ain't do no water training. We were just we were just there to help. Like few this week, we rarely did anything water. Just we, the only thing we did was lay it out. Until the field came, we just filled up the the water buffaloes and the water hippos. And then my sec when he left, uh, it was another one. His name was Sergeant Kaliji, and uh, he was a good first line. Um, but we really ain't do water with him either. Like the whole time he was my first line, we was on a gun team, uh, and that was that was really it until I reclassed. Okay, so you said he was pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Uh, supervisor for you So why X Why X Was he a pretty good Supervisor for you So uh, We want to get into Leadership And basically uh, What do you think A leader is And what type of Qualities Do you think A leader has To start To staff Star and cyber So leadership To me is It's a big thing uh, To Younger Enlisted uh, Soldiers Because I feel like soldiers should have a leader to trust, like not always somebody that's like getting on to them and strictly by the book. I mean, you need to be by the book. You need to know the book. But leadership to me should be someone you can trust. So like basically like an older, what can I say, an older sibling or something like that. That's what I compare it to. Somebody you can trust with, like, everything. Um, somebody that can be on your level when it comes to problems. And not even just problems. And achievements as well. Um, somebody that's supportive, but at the same time can, like, let you know, like, if you're doing something wrong and what you need to fix. Not just kick you while you're down. They, they, should, be able, they should be there to uplift you. And guide you in the right direction to further your career. So that's what I think uh, is the importance of leadership. Okay, so uh, you guys have uh, met Staff Sergeant Cybert. Uh, y'all know where he's from and stuff like that. Uh, make sure you guys follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, 
and YouTube. Uh, also, uh, make sure you guys go and get my book, Growing Up in the Army. Uh, you can find a link in any of my social media. Um, as we close out, uh, Staff Sergeant Cyber, uh, I want you to give advice to a soldier that's just coming in the Army. He don't know what's going on. He don't know what about to happen. All he know is he about to uh, go to basic training. So what type of advice you got, you got for him? So the advice I give to a young soldier coming in is make make the army what you what you envision it to be. Don't don't let nobody guide you in the wrong direction. When you come in, do your job, do your thing. Don't don't get down on yourself. Uh, prosper, outshine everybody that's 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 in your same level. You know what I'm saying? Always try to outshine them. Uh, for the people that's t- telling you that it's bad, it's not. It's not that bad. Um, it instills a lot of discipline, and uh, you build a lot of good friendships. Uh, joining the army, and I just, I just say, keep your head high. Nothing's ever, nothing's ever too bad to where you gotta keep your head low. Just keep your head high, do the right thing, and uh, you should prosper in this career path. Okay, there you guys go. So uh, this has been another episode of Soldiers Talk, the podcast, and I'll see you guys in formation.